Perfect. Thank you so much, Gina. Um, you mentioned a couple things that I forgot about the background noise. So thank you for taking care of that. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying uh, welcome to the last um, WITH meetup for the year of 2021. Uh, it's been another interesting year, but uh, we've managed to have meetups pretty much every month. Um, so that has been a lot of fun. Uh, my name is Kathy Ludwig. I'm uh, an owner of Shift Solutions here in Nebraska, um, and I'm also part of the WITH planning committee. So this is my first event that I've kind of helped organize, uh, so hopefully it goes smoothly. Um, but other than that, welcome. Oh, okay. Here we go. So for those who are new to our meetups, I just kind of wanted to give a quick background on who we are. Uh, we're the Women in Technology of the Heartland, and we're really here to provide a forum for learning and sharing with one another, um, really focusing on the development and promotion of women IT talent um, so that we're not the only women in the room anymore. Um, and I did want to put just a couple pictures of the only in-person meetup that we had of 2021, which I think was August. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Um, I did want to mention that with this is an open to everyone community. Uh, we want to welcome all genders, races, ages, and levels of technical experience um, that are interested in advancing women in the tech field, because really we need everyone um, to help us with that mission. Uh, and then we are always looking for speakers. So if you have a topic that you're interested in presenting, we would love to hear from you. Um, and hopefully it's not too intimidating. We're a very welcoming group um, and we we are definitely here to help you through that process if you are new to presenting. Okay, apparently my little uh, arrow is not working. Uh, so just to give you a little bit of uh, events that maybe you're interested in around town that are coming up, the Omaha Maker Group is something that I found uh, while I was doing some research on these things, and they seem like a really interesting group um, who has a meetup every Tuesday at their shop on 84th and F. So if you have an idea of something that you want to create and need some help uh, doing that, they provide a space and tools and all those types of things. Uh, so I did put a link to their website and their Facebook group, which... Um, their Facebook group has tons of photos and really cool projects that they worked on in the past, so I highly recommend checking them out. Um, also, the uh, Midwest Association of Information Systems is um, a group of about seven different universities in the uh, Midwest area, and they kind of rotate who hosts uh, the conference every year, and it turns out that in 2022, that is UNL. Um, so if, if you're interested in that type of thing, uh, please check them out. Uh, and finally, is our with holiday party, we decided to push it back from December to January, uh, mostly because of COVID stuff. We wanted to make sure everyone was safe and healthy and happy um, for the holidays. So we decided to do a virtual meetup in December and then push the holiday party back to January. And hopefully a micron will be gone by then. Uh, but the location, we're still trying to figure that out. Um, and then uh, just wanted to reiterate that it's fun time of giving and camaraderie, uh, sharing uh, stories and, and fun times um, over drinks and uh, prizes, so. Kathy, yeah. it's, it's oh. Colleen. Can yes. I add something on that? Absolutely. And, and that is that um, we are looking for sponsors for that event because typically we have raffle items and then uh, the money that we raise from the raffle, we donate to Lydia House. So if anybody on this call is interested in uh, providing uh, sponsoring either, you know, monetarily to help with the food or the drinks or um, donating some, some raffle items, I'm going to put my email address in the chat and you guys can email me and we'd be happy for the support. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Colleen. Um, so just a quick shout out to our sponsors. Uh, Shift Solutions is donating the raffle prizes tonight. Uh, so thank you to them. They're a small ba uh, Nebraska-based software company in uh, uh, the government contracting space. And we are currently hiring for uh, some of the exciting Air Force weather projects over at Offutt Air Force Base. Um, and then also thank you to Farm Credit Services of America. Uh, Gina is um, from Farm Credit Services and is so gracious to uh, donate her, their Zoom um, quite often. So we're very, very appreciative. Um, and they are a leading provider of credit and insurance services to farmers, ranchers, and agribusinesses and rural residents and have quite the IT department as well. All right, uh, so just a little enticement to stick around for the whole presentation, not that you need it because it's an amazing presentation, but uh, these are the prizes that we'll be giving away tonight. Um, and that'll be at 6.15. 
Okay, uh, so super excited that our final uh, meetup of the year is with Amisha. Um, she is uh, going to give us a presentation on great how great mentorship can be your advantage. Um, she's going to give us a mentorship how-to, where she'll discuss the benefits of mentorship, how to choose a mentor, how to be a good mentee, uh, which is very important, and we'll give some actionable next steps for becoming a mentor or mentee. And we even have a local organization that is joining us tonight to discuss an amazing mentoring opportunity here, right here in Omaha. Um, Amisha comes to us from First National Bank of Omaha, where she leads the Agile certification training for new scrum teams with her team of trainers. Um, but originally she started her career in the social work field. Um, she is really a testament to how the transition to IT from other sectors may not be as big of a leap as you think, and that she can vouch for the fact that having great mentors throughout that process uh, certainly makes it much easier. So without full, further ado, um, please help me welcome Amisha. Thank you, Kathy. Let me share my screen and we can get started. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, ma'am. All right. So like Kathy said, first I want to, uh, she introduced myself, but I also want to introduce my, my family. And uh, these are my four daughters, um, Nyayla, Nyayla, Razia, that's me, my husband, David, Raina, and um, Aubrey. And um, when I was in social work, I knew that I wanted to do more. And I did some research about different fields to go into, and I landed on IT. I originally had thought about going into networking, but tried that out. Wasn't for me, but I was like, that's okay. I like programming, really love programming and put my whole heart into it and was able to uh, land a job in um, programming. So I, and I, I wanted, wanted my children to be able to see that even if you start off your, your uh, journey, start off somewhere, it can end up somewhere else. So, um, and I hope I want them to follow in that path and not get stuck in, well, I'm doing this, so I have to do this, but, and that's not true. Um, so that, that, that's a, just a little bit about me. I, uh, I loved, I loved social work, but social work and the IT really, um, uh, bridge, uh, bridge with people. Cause that's what, that's what it's all about anyway, helping people come up with solutions. Social work does that. And so does IT. So that's enough about my um, background and I'm just gonna get jump right into um, mentoring and um, how that helped me along the way. But before we get started, I just wanna get us all on the same page and start and talk about a few definitions. So first off, there is sponsorship. So sponsorship sponsors have protégés. A sponsor is a senior level staff member who's invested in protégés career success. They use their, uh, they promote their protégés directly using their influence and network to connect them to high profile assignments. People pay increases and um, sponsorship sponsors help drive their protégés career vision. Then we have mentor. Mentors have mentees. A mentor could be anyone in, in position with, this, with the desire to help a mentee with, by giving advice and support. Mentors support mentees through formal or informal discussions on how to build skills, um, qualities, and am I, am I sharing the right screen? I'm sorry, I'm, I don't think I'm sharing the right screen. Thank you, are. It shows yeah, the you are. screen. Sponsor, mentor. Oh, okay, sure. Okay, cool. Um, Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm sorry. I, I got uh, uh, thrown off. So um, uh, mentors uh, discuss with mentees their, their future goals and um, uh, offer accountability for them. Then there's a coach. A coach is a person who uh, is a, who, who develop, who is a develop a professional to adjust and improve certain things in their career path. That's what a coach does. I think I am not sharing the right one. Let me make sure. For, let me try this one more time. I'm sorry, guys. Yep, yep. You're good. So what we could right. see was just the headings. If you're expecting us okay. to see the full definitions, we couldn't see that, but we could set, we could see sponsor, mentor, career coach. Okay, cool. Now, now I feel, feel good. Thank you. All you're right. Welcome. Again, um, the next one is 
micro mentors. So micro mentors is just what it sounds like. It's a short term mentoring relationship. Um, it could be a few hours, a few days, or even a few weeks. And I'm quite sure plenty of you guys have done this micro mentoring, but didn't have a name for it. I've, I've done it very often with, with uh, family, friends, and even coworkers. And I really enjoy doing this. And I want you know, more people to try to do this and help um, other women in tech along. And then there is role models. So role models is not necessarily a person you know, but look up to and uh, have qualities that you would like to acquire. If, you know, if anybody wants to put in their chat, uh, in the chat, their role models, you're more than welcome to, and we could um, shout those out. But what, some of my role models um, is Muhammad Ali. I like Warren Buffett. I also like um, Oprah. So those are three of my role models. Is there did anybody put any role models in the chat that they um, uh, like? Oh, my mother, my mom. Yes, I like that. My mom. Oh, you guys are sweet. I hope your guys' moms are on the line to see this for you, Michelle Obama. That's one of mine too. <laughs> so uh, that so that's very. I, I feel like that's all you know very important. And then the last one is a mentee. A mentee is someone who's advised, uh, uh, trained, or counseled by a mentor. And someone put Captain Kirk, and I really like that because I'm watching uh, 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 Star Trek um, Discovery right now. So if you're watching, watch that. I think you'll like it better. It has a lot of women in charge. Okay, so now that we have the definitions, let's talk about women in IT. So women, hold just 16% of engineering roles and 27% of computing roles in the United States. And um, women roles in tech, um, women lead roles in tech higher than men lead roles. 50% of women take a tech role uh, and they drop out by the age of 35. Luckily, I got into tech by the age of 35. So I wasn't a part of that statistic. So, but I understand that because there's a um, why, why that happened. And then compared to other um, uh, jobs, only 20% of women drop out of those jobs. So that's a, a big difference. 50% of women who start IT drop out by the age of 35. And we want to curb that percentage. We want more women to stay in um, tech and um, advance. And these, um, these are usually the reason why women drop out of tech, um, lack of sponsorship. So they don't have anybody in their corner rooting them on, saying that they can do it and you know, wanting them to succeed. And lack of female role models, usually you know, being the only one. Sometimes it's very hard being the only one. I had that experience being the only one um, when I first started my programming job. I was the only one, only, uh, only black woman in, in a department programming. So it's, it, it can be you know, lonely sometimes, especially if you don't have that support. And then lack of mentorship, someone who's not there to help you, um, guide you along and help you make sure that you are reaching your goals. But there, there are companies that's doing it right. Microsoft is one of them. Microsoft offers a wide range of programs aimed at attracting, recruiting and retaining and developing women interested in tech roles from around the world. Um, in Microsoft at this time, uh, they hold women hold about 22% of technical roles and increase of 11% in the last three years and 16% in the last five years, which is pretty good. I mean, Microsoft is a really good company, um, but they have put things in place for their for women to uh, have that support. They have a couple of different um, uh, programs such as CODIS and Women uh, Think to help women in diverse backgrounds find connections and mentors in the coding and engineering field to accelerate their key careers. Microsoft also partners with organizations including um, the Anita Bong Institute to connect with diverse communities of professionals and provide its own employees with networking and professional opportunities. So in also at Microsoft, uh, they hold nearly, women hold nearly 41% of the co company roles and an increase of 17% in the last three years and 56% in the last five years. So Microsoft is dedicated to uh, maintaining women 
throughout their, uh, their career in tech. So now uh, I would like to talk to you guys about my journey with micro mentoring. So my first, like I told you before, I come from a social work background. So going to corporate America was a big culture shock for me. But I remember the first day that I was there, I was signing paperwork and uh, I remember the recruiter and the CIO was uh, there uh, talking to me and he wanted me to meet um, this young lady. It was like, well, we, you know, we don't want you to leave yet. We have somebody we want you to meet and um, uh, we'll, we'll think this would be a big help for you while you're here. And I'm like, who, who could it be? Who, this, who can this big lady be? Um, and then here she comes walking down the, uh, the, uh, the staircase and her name is Jen. So at that moment, I knew that my company did that. I uh, 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 said yes to wanted me to stay. They wanted me to feel welcome. They wanted me to um, uh, have someone for support. And I appreciate that. And a lot, I think more companies need to um, incorporate that into um, welcoming new employees. I also was from out of town. So I'm not originally from Omaha either. So that was another big plus. Um, Jen um, showed me the round town, show me uh, you know, different school systems, schools that my children can go to and stuff like that. So I really appreciate uh, the fact that Jen was introduced to me and helped me um, acclimate to Omaha and corporate corporate culture. So I, I could talk to you about corporate culture. So like I said before, come from uh, social work. So um, my company usually is more, no more than 30 people. The company I joined, 500 plus people. We have, a, um, so we have a, a all hands meeting. This is the first time I have an all hands First time having all hands meeting at this major. We have food, we have snacks, you know, drinks and everything. And we're sitting down, we're talking, you know, we're sitting down and we're getting ready to listen to the, the uh, CEO talk about um, what the state of the company is. So this is all new to me. I'm taking it all in. And then all of a sudden I hear like laughter. And I'm like, what is going on? What, what, what is everybody laughing about? And then um, I hear, you know, and then we go on somewhere and I hear a little bit more laughter. And I was like, okay. Next time I see Jen, I will talk to her because I'm not understanding what's going on. So next time I see Jen, I'll talk to her. So I, I, I you know, said, Jen, I was like, well, what was the joke? I, I missed it. What happened? She's like, well, Misha, you know, they, in corporate America, they have, they, they make jokes, um, but they're not knee slappers, not comedians, but you give, uh, you have a corporate laugh. And I was like, a corporate laugh? I said, I don't have one of those. She said, well, you need to get one. I'm like, okay, I will. I will have given myself a corporate laugh, so I'll be ready next time we have the, you know, these uh, jokes. And social work really don't have too much to laugh about, so wasn't used to, to having that. So I was ready next time when when, when the CEO was uh, made his joke. I knew it wasn't a knee slapper, but it was a corporate laugh that I was, I was supposed to have. Also, Jen helped me with the corporate quiet. So with working in corporate America, I don't know if you guys know that, but it's very, very, very quiet. I was not, that was something I was not used to. I was used to being in a room of people and we're talking all the time. And if you want it quiet, you would leave, you would leave the room. Um, in corporate America, if you want, uh, you have, if you want to be, want to talk, you leave the room. Talk. I don't know if someone was saying something, but if you want to talk, you leave, you know, you leave the room. So that was another thing she helped me with. So, well, you probably, I said, you probably gonna have, she's like, you probably gonna have to have headphones because it, it's gonna probably get pretty boring trying to work and just hear quiet. So she helped me out with that. And she just helped me out with networking, knowing who to talk to, who, who, who does what, what department is what. And she just made sure that I was acclimated to, um, uh, to our company and business acumen. So I really appreciate Jen. Um, we are still friends at this time and uh, we still uh, see each other um, often. Yeah, Jen is, Jen is she's very amazing. I think somebody had, um, vid, uh, sound is on. Got it. Okay, great. So Jen helped me so much with uh, a lot of different things in corporate America and I, and I appreciate it because it was definitely a shock coming from a, 
you know, coming from a different city and then coming from a totally different background. So um, she helped me with the corporate culture. The next thing um, I would like to talk about is education. So I knew that I wanted to advance my education and, and become, uh, a, 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 at that time, it was a project manager. And this young lady, um, I, when I met her, I was just in awe of her. She, she had came to America from Vietnam. She had went to school here um, and got her bachelor's degree and then um, went on to get her uh, master's, de master's degree. Uh, and this young lady, her name is Foi. She was my, um, she is actually my project manager and she helped me uh, tremendously. We talked about um, uh, my career advancement and uh, either she had an MBA and I, I was wondering if that would be the path for me. And we had sat down and talked, I, I would say about at least a month about regarding M MBA versus MIS, the pros and cons and what path that I wanted to go to. And after talking and reviewing and researching and going back and forth with uh, Fua, I decided to go and get my MIS. And that was one of the, probably the best decisions that I made. And I appreciate that Fua was able to guide me. And, and she, did not, she didn't uh, favor her MBA because she had an MBA. She just wanted to make the best decision for, for me. And I really appreciate that she was able to do that. And I appreciate, and I really uh, commend her for um, how she has immigrated to the United States and become the person that she is today. So I'm gonna sit this here and have everybody read this before I go on to the next person. I think that this statement is pretty profound. And this is not a, a old statistic. This statistic is from this year. 60% of women have never negotiated with their employer over salary or benefits. So if we see 10 people, 10 women, six, six of them have never negotiated. And I used to be one of those women. I didn't know how to negotiate. I didn't know if I could negotiate. Um, what if they say no? What you know? I, I, what am I supposed to do? Um, I didn't know. I didn't know any ins or outs of it, and how how I was supposed to perform that at all until I met this young lady. Uh, real quick, Amisha, Gina had yeah. a quick question about um, what the uh, percentage is for men. Do you know that? I do not know the percentage of uh, for men. Um, but that, I mean, that's just something I can. Uh, when you guys on the break room, I can look that up. Yeah, that's definitely interesting. I'd, I'd be curious as well. Um, and my other question was about your previous two uh, women that you introduced. Those, um, what would you consider those? Are those micro mentors or yeah, so all educated mentors? All these, um, these ones that you'll see are um, at first are my micro mentors. So Jen, Fua, and then the next one, micro, next two are micro mentors. And then I'll get into my mentor. Any more questions? I didn't catch any other ones in chat, but uh, I'm trying to keep an eye, but everyone's uh, got so many interesting things to say too. Okay, so yeah, so like I said, I was one of the, one of the part of it, I was part of that 60%. Um, I think I tried to negotiate like one time and I got like shut down and I was like, well, okay, I'll just take whatever they give me. I think they're being fair or whatever. <laughs> so, um, but with, before, before I knew this young lady, why neat? I, I was one of part of that sixty percent. Why neat? Walk me through how to negotiate for your salary, how to negotiate for benefits, how to interview. Even before before I met Wani, I didn't know that you could tell uh, people that you're interviewing that you know what I I, I am interviewing a couple different um, companies at this time, um, but and I would like to see them through, and after that I can make a decision on what your offer is. Before I would have no confidence in doing that. Why me gave me that confidence, and she mentored me on, you know, how to ask for salary, how to do um, 
market research to make sure that I am getting uh, the money that I'm worth. And I feel like all of us women need to do that, practice doing that. I've practiced with, I micro mentor other women in practicing and helping them um, negotiate it, they sell it and what to expect. But Amisha, what's Juanit's role? Does she work in HR somewhere or is she, what, right. was, what was her position when she was helping you? In my, she was in HR when she was helping me. Right now she's an a executive assistant, but yes, she was in HR. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any other questions? I, I don't know if, if I was the only one that was not negotiating salaries, but I know that that's what the statistic says, but I really appreciate that Juanit was help, helping me negotiate salary, helping me uh, guide me through interviewing. Um, because, you know, before I was like, okay, well, this first person offered me the, this position, I'm just going to just take that one and forget about the other people that I had lined up interviewing. She's like, no, no, you're not supposed to do that. You could tell them. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. It's like, no, you could tell them. I'm, I'm got, I got a couple of other interviews lined up. I would like to see them through and I'll, I'll make a decision on once I'm done. Before I didn't have no confidence in saying that, none whatsoever. So I appreciate um, Juanit and helping me, guide me through that, the interview process, the salary process, um, uh, learning the uh, market value uh, for my position and not to, um, really not to settle. If it's not what you want, okay, somebody else, somebody, there is a company out there that's going to um, meet, meet your needs. It's, it's, it's reciprocal. It's not a, a, a one-way street, it's a two-way street. So I do really appreciate why need. And so I think we are ready for the breakout rooms. And the question for the breakout rooms are, what do you all think are qualities to look for in a mentor? And with these breakout rooms, it's not going to be facilitated by any certain person. So you guys just decide who will be the facilitator. And then when you guys come back, um, who will speak it out? I will be a couple more slides before um, we can compare answers. So I want to see if you guys have the same answers that I do. Okay, so Amisha, how long would you like me to set these breakout rooms for? Um, I, I think a five minutes should be enough. Okay, gang, so I am going to automatically assign you to breakout rooms. There'll be five to six people in your room, and I will quickly see if I can get it set for a five-minute return where it will automatically bring you back to the big room after that. Hopefully everyone has the question memorized. <laughs> yep. So what, and I can put that in the chat also. What do you all think are qualities to look for in a mentor? I'll put in the chat as well, which you should mm -hmm. be able to see from there. Yep. Okay. I am looking to make sure I have things set up correctly and I'm going to open the rooms. I would like to hear that dad joke. <laughs> so the recording has resumed and Jennifer, you are on. <laughs> All right. Um, it is a proven fact that when Mozart was composing his symphonies, he did not use these two fingers. Do you know how I know that? How? How do you know it? Because they're mine. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. <laughs> now that's a good one. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I love Alicia, I remember that. Back, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was in, I was a silent observer in one of the breakout rooms and it was very good conversation. I hope the other breakout rooms were just as good. We think ours was better. <laughs> <laughs> just off the bat, you're like, ours is better. <laughs> All right. So um, hopefully you guys wrote down some of those um, qualities that you would look for in a mentor. And then uh, we will pick that up in uh, probably about five minutes and we'll discuss it, okay? And now my mentorship journey. 
But before we get started, I want one more micro mentorship. So now this, this lady, she, she had reminded me of my five-year plan. I originally met her uh, at an interview. She interviewed me and I thought that I bombed this interview that she, I was not going to get hired. And she just thought I was like, not good enough for this position but when i when i did get hired later and she just told me like you were just great i was just i just want to make sure you knew all you knew the answers and, and you you know work hard you know work under pressure but she she were I, it was a, a position that came open uh, a scrum master position and she suggested that i apply for it and i was kind of scared like I, I don't know if i'm ready and she was like you're ready <laughs> you're ready to do this this is what you said you wanted to do when we interviewed that you wanted to be a uh, project manager that was your five-year plan this is what you want to do and now it's um coming up that's a little bit earlier so um you need to go for it and then she also suggested the, uh, the person I will be introducing at Karina as my mentor and if it wasn't really if it wasn't for this this lady Kathy I would not have applied for that position and I would have not have asked Karina to be my um uh, mentor so I really appreciate uh her input and her help and she micro mentored me while I was working um at this particular organization and I really appreciate her now on to my mentor let me, there we go, Karina. Now, Karina Savage is, uh, she is um, her CEO of Business Agility Strategist and an Agile Coach and Trainer at K4 Agility. That's her, her own company. And she has worked with multiple businesses in Omaha and across the country to improve their product, man product management, agile product delivery and technical um, agility practice. Now I met, I observed Karina delivering um, agile transformation in my company. And when I saw her, I said, that's who I want to be like. I want to be like that. I want to be able to deliver uh, deliver uh, agile uh, principles like she does. I want to be able to hold an audience and make sure that they are learning. I want it to be, I was like, I wanted to be like Karina. And so with the push of Kathy, I went and asked Karina if she would be my mentor. And Karina, being Karina, she was like, what do you want to get out of it? I'm like, okay. I was prepared though. So I Googled what, you know, what, you know, what, how, how mentor and mentee work. And I told her, I said, I would like to, you know, I, I told her, I want to be able to deliver like you. I want to have a deep knowledge of uh, agile practices. I want to be able to uh, run a uh, scrum team effectively. And she said, okay, we're going to start working on it. So this is my formal, um, formal mentor and Karina has been my mentor for about three years and we all even we even though we have a mentorship we have a really deep friendship too so and we are able to turn that on and off which I'm happy we are able to uh turn that on and off um when needed Karina helped me with presenting and you know, speaking clearly so that people understand what I'm saying. I usually speak very fast and that's just my natural cadence, but I have learned to slow down so people <laughs> can understand what I'm saying. And Karina has um, also additionally to speaking clearly and presenting and um, captivating the room, she's taught me, you know, the scrum principles. I am unshakable with those principles. And I, that's something that I was able to translate to FMBO and help train the new um, squads coming up. Um, Karina has uh, has just helped me to, from, for three years, I can tell the difference in having a mentor than not having a mentor. She holds me accountable. I, she holds me accountable for the goals that I've set in the beginning of the year. Usually I have three goals that I'm trying to accomplish and we um, check in um, probably bi-weekly basis to make sure that those goals are being achieved. And one of the goals that I wanted to do this year was to speak publicly. Karina assisted in making that happen. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate that Karina has been my mentor. She introduced me to Kathy at the last in-person meetup and I pitched to Kathy um, what I wanted to speak about. I said, I wanted to speak about mentorship and how important it is, especially for women, black women and women in color to have those uh, type of mentors to stay in this field. We need 
our voices need to be heard in this field. It's so important to have that diversity. So I appreciate Karina and all her help um, throughout my career. She has, uh, you know, helped me with. Uh, I, I've I've assisted her with transformation, so I know how to, tra you know, tra uh, uh, have transformation throughout a company. She's helped me with presentation. She's helped me with, um, with, with even with con with confidence. Like you know this stuff. You are the expert. You no one can shake you. She used to be able to shake me though. She used to t try to test me and I'm like, uh, Karina, um, I don't know. Cause she always used to tell me, I don't know is an acceptable answer. So I try to use that. She's like, you can't use it anymore. A year in, no more, I don't know, you know. So I just uh, like the fact that she holds me accountable. She, even before this meeting, she was like, okay, so what's the next, for, what's for um, uh, Q, uh, Q, Q1? I was like, Karina, let me get through the this, um, meeting. And then we will circle, circle back and come up with my goals. She's like, okay, I'll give you a break. <laughs> she said, but she always keeps me on track and she always um, makes sure that I, you know, I have the bigger picture in, involved. She might not get, always, she, she doesn't always give me the steps because it's, you know, it is my journey and it's not a dictatorship is what I, I want, but she's going to help me get there. And I appreciate um, that she has uh, done that for me. Has, I don't know if anybody else have had mentors or want to uh, put in the chat uh, it, what uh, mentors have done for them. Um, if not, we, I could just move on. Uh, Kathy, I, I'm not. I can't. I'm not looking at the chat. If anybody, <laughs> it's yeah. all good things. Everyone's saying congrats on your goal, and we're grateful <laughs> oh. that you're here. Yeah, I it, it is, and it, it, and I just feel so blessed. Now, even with the micro mentors, they 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 have helped me get here, but Karina has accelerated my my um in my career okay so let's go on uh to the next slide and what to look for in a mentor so we had a chat and i know it was a couple people that were spokespeople so let's see if um you guys uh what you guys came up with match with what i say who was who like to go first Um, I can go. I was the spokesperson um, for our group. Um, some of the things that we talked about that we really liked was um, this idea that a mentor um, doesn't isn't like caught up in their own ego. So they do a lot of listening and kind of what you said about like asking questions um, and helping you find your own journey as opposed to creating um, just a duplicate copy. Um, we use the phrase, someone in the group used the phrase, a good head on their shoulders. Um, so that the mentorship experience isn't about them, um, you know, and, and making themselves feel good. It's about, you know, extending their expertise into the community. I'm Patty, I can go next. This is for room four. Uh, um, the qualities what we came out with is a good listener, open communication. Uh, we are able to trust and have open channel where we could speak. We're able to provide honest feedback. Uh, individual able to advise and consult and support and provide guidance what, where we would like to move forward with. Um, I like it. This is Rosemary. My group had something sort of similar where we we also stressed, um, you know, good communication. Uh, they should be very, you know, they should be confident in their knowledge of, you know, what they're mentoring you in. Because um, if you're not confident and they're not confident, then it's not a great mentorship. Um, but also, uh, we also talked about um, how that mentor shouldn't be judgmental you know they should they, they should make you feel welcome and you should feel free to ask questions and you know like you shouldn't feel like you have to be passing a test or anything with your mentor just you know feel free to open up and ask them things like it um our group talked about i'm just kind of weeding out some things that have already been talked about but um somebody who sees your potential um, somebody who uses their connections to introduce you to people who could help you if they can't, um, the other people you can talk to, um, somebody who's transparent, they're open, they're honest, they're ready to help, um, 
and somebody who is relatable and encouraging, um, who helps you when you're not feeling confident and who has experience in areas that you might not have experience. Great answers. Anyone else? Um, My for group. group. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I'm not sure what group number we were, but um, my group talked about we want a mentor that would hold you accountable, um, that would that you are able to talk to. They're invested in your future and your goals. Also, they will be able to help you professionally and personally. And um, our whole group, we all decided that like we wanted women to be our mentors, or we would prefer um, another woman to be our mentor. Thank you. Anyone else? For group five, we we kind of, uh, we're we're at the end here, so pretty much what everybody else said is exactly what we said. But <laughs> I like um, but, it. All of the above. <laughs> yeah, but we also had a couple other ones that were a little bit different. Um, we we thought that um, it was important for a mentor to be someone who could prioritize their time. Um, for you and not be, you know, people are so busy jumping from meeting to meeting these days and, you know, having somebody who, who will dedicate time to spending with you, to helping, helping you in whatever area. Um, and of course, listening and not judgmental. Those were a couple of things too. Um, and what, something else that was mentioned was, um, someone who's maybe a natural educator that kind of gravitates to, um, liking to show people around and show people how to do things. And, you know, so somebody who, who is a natural teacher, you know, mm -hmm. who, who enjoys that and, um, gravitates towards that. Those are, were all great answers and, um, mostly all of them uh, covered what I what I also said was a great mentor. You know, an expert in their in their field that you aspire to be to, in. You know, giving you guidance helps you refine your goals. So you might have like, okay, I want to be, uh, you know, I want to be a public speaker. What do you want to talk about though? So you know, they help you narrow that that down. Um, they help you focus. Um, I also said they help you plan, hold accountable you inspect and adapt. So maybe you, you decide that this is a particular goal for you. And then you say, you know what? We tried it. I didn't, I didn't like the way that turned out. And you guys figure out a different plan of action. And I really like, um, I think what Rosia said, someone who is genuinely, genuinely invested in your career growth. I feel like that's really a big deal because some people are not like, we want that, those type of people who really want to see us grow. That what they get out of helping you is, the fact that you are you are growing, and another thing I was going to say that you know the relationship is you know driven by the mentee. They coming up with the with their their goals, and um, but the the mentor helps refine it. And I think Kara was talking about um, uh, uh, what I would say engaged. That mentor is engaged with you. They are making time for you. They are you know dedicating that time. So those are. Uh, my most important things to look for a mentor. And I feel like everybody covered, the, covered those. So good job, guys. We're all on the same page. All right. So let's talk about, uh, I forgot to do these. I'm sorry, guys. All right. <laughs> How to be a good mentee. So having that growth mindset that you want to get better. You want, um, you're losing that ego you, you may have done things um, a certain way before, and but that mentor's like, well, let's try, try it this way. So you have to have that growth mindset that you want to get better all the time. Uh, another thing is a positivity, having a positive attitude. I feel like that carries you a long way because there's always going to be someone that try to bring you down or say that you can't do it. But if you believe in yourself and you have that confidence and you're positive, no one can stop you. What's for you is gonna, always going to be for you. So just continue to have a net positivity. And then make sure that you're, you're in the driver's seat. You wanna drive that relationship. Um, if it's something that maybe your mentor suggests that you don't like, if you guys have a good relationship, you should be able to talk to that mentor and say, you know what, that's not really something I was really thinking about. This is what I'm thinking about. 
So you all, you want to be in that driver's seat. Any questions about that? Um, yeah, yeah, Janice, no, Jan I don't know if that's just echo or not questions. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute since we can't get that okay. clear voice, but I will ask that it sounded like that was coming from Beth. Beth, if you wanted to put your comment in through the chat, that would be, that would be great. Cause I'm not trying to, I'd love to hear a question. I just can't hear you clearly. Okay. All right. Um, while Beth is maybe writing a question in check, I'll go on to the next one. So what are the next, what's the next steps? What if you want to be a mentor? All right, so this is um, uh, something that uh, me and Kathy have talked about and come up with. If you would like to be a mentor, go to the Women in Tech page on the Meetup app. State your expertise. State whether you want to be a mentor or a micro mentor. And put in your LinkedIn profile. Now, if you want- and those are comments, right? Like a comment on the event, this event? This is, this is if you wanna be a, a mentor. So this is how um, the people on, in, this, yeah, in this event can um, connect with each other. If they, have, uh, if they wanna be a mentor, uh, and then the next slide is if they would like to be a mentee. So, you know, go to that, again, go to that tech page, read over um, the discussion, see if you have a match. And go to that perspective um, profile mat, uh, profile and introduce yourself. And so we do have uh, someone. Um, I think Jennifer is going to be here, or Stephanie. Um, I have your next slide. Awesome! Thank you. You're welcome. So, hi, friends. My name is Stephanie Kidd. And my colleague Jennifer and I are here to tell you about a mentorship program that we are rolling out called Opportunity Core for women in STEAM. And um, just to tell you a little bit about who we are and why we crashed your meeting, thanks for letting us come. Um, we work at a place called the Unitech Institute, which is on the campus of UNMC. And we've been given a $250,000 grant from the Kaufman Foundation in Kansas City to do some programming for women in STEAM. And we created Opportunity Core. The idea behind Opportunity Core is um, for the next two years, we're going to be running this program that will match up women in STEAM mentors with women just like you who work in either STEAM academics or STEAM industry who are interested in anything to do with entrepreneurship and learning more about it um, and want to be a part of our 10 month program. So if you'll go to the next slide, I will tell you a little bit more about it and about um, the entrepreneurship program and the mentors. So these are our incredible mentors. And I have to tell you, y'all are the very first people in all of Omaha to know who these mentors are. Um, we haven't released it on our social media yet. We haven't sent out any information yet. So surprise, you get to know who they are. There's one woman mentor for each of the five industries, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And they're listed here. And y'all, they are a powerhouse, phenomenal list of women. And the way the program will work is we're going to select 25 applicants from our pool who will become fellows for the 10-month program. In the perfect world, we would pick five from science, tech, engineering, arts, and math each, but that's not how our candidates are going to come in. So I'm just going to tell you we're going to pick 25 total, probably heavy in the science and technology areas, to have the opportunity to be matched up with these incredible, incredible STEAM mentors. The program details are listed here, but basically, the women that we choose will meet for 10 Fridays during 2022, and then we'll be matched up for one-on-one -on -one sessions with these mentors. So for the full year, these women will have the opportunity to have individualized coaching sessions with these women and also learn about entrepreneurship under the guise of either invention, ideation, 
or innovation as we place them on teams to work on businesses that will go from idea to commercialization. Jenny's putting in the chat some information about the program. She's also going to put in the chat the actual application, which is super easy. You just have to basically give us your information and tell us if you would categorize yourself as science, tech, engineering, arts, or math. And then tell us, do you have a business idea? If you do, that's cool. If you're more interested in something that would be like being an entrepreneur for a business, that's cool too. What type, of or, um, what type of experience do you have with entrepreneurship and why are you interested in it? If you don't have any experience yet, that's okay. If you're mostly interested in the mentorship portion because you think Dr. Sarah Myers or Agnes Lene is super rad and you're interested in being in a mentorship with either of those women or Amanda Wilson, Sarah Brown, or Sangeeta Badal, you guys, Sangeeta Badal, um, super rad women, all of them. Um, that's what you can put in your application too. The other thing that Jenny and I want you to know is the entire program is completely free. There's no application fee and there's no fee if you're chosen as a fellow, which if you're familiar with these types of huge year long professional development programs, that's pretty amazing. A lot of these types of programs, the ones through, for example, um, like young professionals and things like that, ask your businesses to pay a pretty hefty fee for you to be a part of it. Ours is completely free. So we hope that you all will be interested in joining us. We're really excited about the program. The educational component is specifically designed for women. It's modeled after a program called Innovation Core through NSF, but everything is being, being designed specifically with a lens for women. What are the barriers that women entrepreneurs face? Um, how can we help them overcome them? Those Friday sessions will be educational classes in the morning, but then in the afternoon, you and your mentors will get the chance to hear from successful business owners, entrepreneurs in the Omaha area who will come in for panel sessions, and engaging and interactive sessions in the afternoon. We're really, really stoked for this program. Um, oh, I should have said, we're partnering with Bio Nebraska to present it. Um, for those of you that know Sasha Forsen, she is our, um, our co-host for the program through Bio Nebraska. She's the associate director there, and she's a really, really incredible woman, and we're excited that she's joining us. So that's our pitch. We hope you would love to come and be a mentee in our program. Do you all have any questions for me or for Jennifer? Or do you want her to tell you another dad joke? This, this looks like a great opportunity and we're so grateful that you guys were here to, to share it and for everybody on here, how fortunate that you are that you get to hear about it first. Um, so uh, besides the people on this call, if they want to forward this out to other people in their organizations, are they free to, to do that and to share this information as well? Yes, Absolutely. Please. please do share it with all the amazing women that you know. We And I should say, too, this is open to college students, to grad students, to faculty members, to folks that work in both industry and also academia. Um, we would love a fantastic, diverse group of women and femmes to apply. And I see Jennifer put her email address and your yeah. email address in the chat so that you all yeah. have follow-up questions that you can reach out to them directly. Awesome. Thanks, friends. Thank you. Thank you very much.